Hello, and welcome to SoberCast, where we provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in podcast format. We're an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting SoberCast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into our virtual basket. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. And I want to welcome those of you that are new with us this evening to just sit back, try to hear what's going to be shared with an open mind. I'm going to give you a sneak preview into my life right here, right now, because it so happens that the step that I've been asked to speak on, it hits me right between the eyes, right where I am right now. Um, I'm in the furthest upper room in the house that's a guest room that no one uses so that I could be in a quiet place and just have an intimate time with you this evening because the house right now is filled with a lot of family that have come in from a number of states because we have someone transitioning in our home right now and um but what's most important to me is is to be here with you right now the person transitioning in our home is going to transition when they transition but we're all still here And so I'm really grateful to get to share and spend this time with you. Thank you so much. Um, My sobriety date is um, 5-15-1992. It's the only one I've ever had and I've ever had, and I'm extremely grateful for that. I'm so grateful that when I got here, (laughs) when I drug myself here, there were phenomenal and incredible people a part of a worldwide organization and fellowship that welcomed me in with open arms. And um, I wasn't this lady sitting right here before you right now. I was closed off. I was introverted. I came here with the mindset that if I just got the, the information that I could easily take the information and move on with my life. The information just how to stop drinking. And so I sought the book and, you know, I would go to book studies and things of this nature. And a year in, I was still saying, you people. (laughs) As if I weren't one of you. So I'm really glad that there were people that had walked this path and that were seasoned in their sobriety and in their recovery, that they could look beyond my ignorance. They could see my real need and they wrenched their hand out to me and they did not let me go. That's how I get to sit here and be with you this evening. So listen, if I'm a bit emotional while we go through this time together, just overlook that. What I'm sharing with you is my experience I'm not taking you through the big book. That's a workshop. This right here, I've been asked to share my experience, my strength, and my hope. And so just listen for that. We all have similarities, even though we may have had some differences, but we have more similarities than we ever will differences. Listen for the similarities. If it doesn't apply to you right now, I'm sorry to tell you this, We all get a seat where I'm sitting right now. We all get a turn to lose the people that we love. We all get a turn for life to show up unannounced and sucker punch us, you know, and knock the wind out of us. We all get a turn. It's not will we, it's when we. Okay? So the 11th step. We seek through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understand God, praying only for the knowledge of his will and the power to carry that out. So I thought initially earlier today, oh, I'll sit in the living room. It's real pretty there and, you know, and everything. And I'll have time to go and change clothes and be presentable and all these sort of things. And then the house start filling up. People were coming in from the airport and so forth, right? 
And then I thought, oh, okay, well, I'll go upstairs in the upstairs loft and I'll sit up there. It's nice and cozy. It'll be quiet and we'll have our intimate time together. And a few more people there about, hmm, right now, maybe about six people downstairs, right? But the loft is open. And the environment in which they've come in has been so layered with prayer. They all feel so comfortable in being here. And there's laughter in the house and someone's transitioning. And there's love and laughter in the house right now. And I'm so grateful for that. I'm so grateful that the life I live today is the one I said I'd never live. I grew up, I was born and raised in Los Angeles. And um, I was raised by a praying mother, not a religious mother, but a praying mother. She understood that there was a power that was far greater. And it wasn't our language that I've come to know now. But actually, what I've learned here in AA came to me in a condensed form of kind of what I'd been given all my life. But it was a straightforward, condensed form that oh, it, 12 steps, 12 steps. And they were given to me, really, over a lifetime. But I didn't know how to formulate them and how to, and how to carry them out. So I'm so grateful for those that came before us and the pioneers that forged the path that afforded us the seats we get to sit in today. I'm so grateful. Mm. So, so as there's laughter going on in the house and I meant to spend my day a completely different way, but I spent my day by about three hours preparing salads, believe it or not, different kind of salads for people that came in from the airport and people that are coming in to see our family member that's transitioning. You know, and um, and I stood at this big counter making all these salads and a big one, you know, and some one, one person only wants this and someone doesn't else, someone else doesn't eat that. I just stood there praying and saying, God, let me get this right, because I really am in the moment that I'm in. I'm I'm so fortunate to to really be present in the moment that I'm in. So the topic that I chose was faith without works is dead. And that's found at the end of page 88, last paragraph. And I'm going to break that down for you. What that has meant for me is no matter how much information has been shared with me, generated with me, um, that I've absorbed and I can regurgitate. No matter how I think I've cultivated this life of prayer and relationship with my higher power, which I choose to call God, don't let that be an offense to you because somebody may choose to call their higher power God. You have the right here to call your higher power anything you want to. I truly believe in my heart of hearts that there is a power that supersedes all powers, and it didn't need another power to help them to keep the sun suspended in the air. All the planets aligning so they never collide with each other. There's a power far greater than any human power. I don't think that power takes offense because we call it a particular name. Call it whatever you want to call it. Just call it. <laughs> Just call it. And so... I've come to learn that the prayers I pray, the faith I have not activated by how I live my life on any given day are all with ought. What I mean by that is when I pray for a friend that's in dire need of God's hand to be in motion in their lives, then I have to take the position of walking that prayer out. I have to activate it. I have to activate it. If I put $100 in Wells Fargo's bank and I come back 10 years for it, it's eaten up by the monthly fees if I don't continue to activate that account. 
So I have an open account with this phenomenal power that I've looked back over my life and I finally realized something I never understood. I came here with a um, with horrific resentment against the same power that I now come to embrace and love. I came here seeing what they did, what the power didn't do, and I never knew that I had a part to play in the production of my own life. <laughs> But I've come to learn that in order for this, while we're waiting on God, God's waiting on us to activate those prayers, right? Activation of the prayer. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to pray for, there's a real situation in a de dear friend of mine's life right now. And I can't alleviate the situ situation from them in and of myself by myself but I can activate the prayers that I pray and I know the power will show up, you know, and I can incorporate other human power to make sure that the needs of someone so dear to me are addressed. And I can ask that power to show me how to do that in the day that I'm in. Like I don't rely on my own understanding. I have a seat here for life. I can't rely totally on my understanding. It's so limited to the vast needs of the world we live in today. I understand that I can't save the world and I can't save a, another human being. I did not save myself. But that, that power that we choose to trust saw fit to allow us all to be present here tonight on this platform. So let's talk about that power and how we activate the prayers we pray to that power. If I see a person homeless on the street, there's a wind whistling outside this window that it, it's howling really loud as if I were in Chicago and I'm in California, Southern California. There's a wind whistling really loud out, outside that window. So if I see a person on the street and the temperature would suggest that it's really, really cold, they don't even have shoes on, right? And so I pray to this power and I say, oh God, please bless that person. Okay. And I walk away. Just walk away. What do I have? What's in my tool belt? What's in my tool chest? Are there any shoes in the trunk of my car? How about, how about those shoes for the gym? Maybe they won't fit on the person's whole feet, but I can give them up. How about those few pair of socks in the gym bag that I keep in the trunk of my car and the extra jacket that I think, you know, just in case when I'm out. Like I keep certain things in my car that no matter where I am and the length that I'm there, that I'm prepared for the elements. How about, how about I go check what's in the trunk of my car and activate that prayer I just prayed? Why would I pray the prayer and hope that someone else comes along and helps the person I just prayed for? And I have the ability to. I can't save them. But it's cold. The wind is howling. There's a, there's a wool jacket on the, on the back seat of my car. And there is a hoodie in the trunk. Get out and activate the prayer. Because faith without works really is dead. If I don't put anything into my account, my spiritual account, with this power that we've come to trust, we've come to know and we're still getting to know and we've come to love. If I don't put anything into that account, when life shows up, I don't have anything to withdraw. I didn't put anything in. And I'm sure the power carries us day by day. Some of us are maybe two days sober and others of us are maybe 35 years sober. And, you know, and, and all through there, stair step. The power obviously works for us even when we're not working for it ourselves. I don't, I don't tell myself how I'm going to stay sober today. I used to in early years, you know, I had a plan and it was real simple. 
what step am I working right now? <laughs> it was like working the steps. And after a while, they, be, they become so ingrained, you just live them. It's just a part of life. I don't, I don't, I don't have to take myself through a mantra of how to brush my teeth and keep my oral hygiene up anymore. I've done that for years. It's second nature to me now. And this kind of comes like that to you over time. And thank God there are people up ahead of you and people that are coming up behind you that are new to our program, that are new to our fellowship. So this never becomes a stalemate to us. And so like, let's go back to this power. So I don't tell myself today how I'm going to be sober tomorrow. Sure, we all have we all have a list or a litany of things that we are responsible for, that we're committed to, and that will show up for in life, right? We all have them. We all, you know, we, we have our list. But then there's something that, tr that trumps whatever's on my list any given day. And I have a list. I'm not, no. I have a list <laughs> every day. I have lists to tell me to refer to the other list. I still make physical lists. Oh, don't forget about such and such. You need to hear a fifth step here. So-and-so is waiting for you so they can, you know, share their fifth step with you. Don't, you know, I have lists to tell me to, to, to refer to other lists. But then there's this power that gives me a certain knowing about a person, a place, a situation, or a thing that trumps my list on a daily basis. And I have to rely on that power. And I rely on that power through faith. So let's take a look at this word I'm talking about in here called faith. I've heard a lot of people say they don't really have faith. They don't have much faith. Yes, we do. If we're alcoholics and we're sitting on this platform, we believe in a whole lot of things to make it here. We believe we can make it to the bar before the bar closed. We believe if we tip the bartender just right that, you know, he was, he was going to give us love in our glasses. You know, we believe that uh, if we uh, had to hitch a ride to make it to a certain hangout spot, you know, where music was flowing and, and, and champagne was flowing and music was playing and drinking was, oh, we believe, we have faith. So I don't know how we become so closed-minded when we get here about having faith. We have faith, you know, in my case, and I'm sure there are cases of others that are on this platform. Not only did I have faith in my drinking and how that was going to be conducted and come about, you know, on occasions I'd uh, incorporate some party favors and I sure had faith about them too. I had faith. <laughs> we don't make it here without faith. So how is it that we get here and then we no longer have faith? You know, our faith will take us to the bottom of the barrel where if we cannot get alcohol or what are they, moonshine or something distilled or how people will make this thing called a hooch and they take fruit and they ferment it trying to make wine, homemade wine or whatever, you know. You know, and some of us have drank uh, perfume and rubbing alcohol and we have faith and we drink Listerine has had so many you know a, a small content of alcohol in it we had faith we had faith that even if we couldn't have the uh, desired drink of our choice that what we could get our hands on was going to at least shift the atmosphere within us we had faith and so now there is this process in this program that suggests to us, well, actually it does more than just suggest. I take that back. No, it actually tells us that if we don't develop a relationship with our higher power, with God, however you choose to see that, that it's absolutely essential for us to acquire and maintain sobriety and a real uh, and a good recovery. Essential. Because without help, I'm doomed. I I'll fail. Um, so let me tell you what's going on like right now and how my faith has to be activated and how I have to pay into that account, that spiritual account. 
I live an extraordinary life that's above and beyond my wildest dreams, my whole imagination and expectation, and I'm a dreamer. My thought patterns and processes have never been limited. But I live this life that I never saw for myself. And the glimpse I had of it was in my rearing and in my adolescence of a mother that prayed every day for people and for her children, for her family, for her community, for the planet. Right now, if she were still living, she would be praying for the Ukrainians. We're all connected whether we choose to believe that or not on some level. She would be praying for the state of our nation and others. And so she had a prayer life that incorporated other people that were yoked like her, that had a sense of faith that chose to join her in prayer each day. And I thought to myself coming up, I don't want that kind of life. Like, are you kidding me? Like, why would someone spend their whole life that way? And uh, I never wanted it. And I vowed not to have it. And what do you think my life is like today? Now, it wasn't like this. It was not like this prior to Alcoholics Anonymous. I assure you, it was not. It was not. But you've taught me how to believe. You've taught me how to incorporate a prayer life in my daily life. You've taught me how it's okay for me to just sit to be in an empty room and sit still, be quiet, and allow the spirit that keeps me sober to speak to me. And that it was going to be okay. I don't know about anybody else, but meditation wasn't, wasn't on my list of things to do with getting sober. And I couldn't figure out what that had to do with anything anyway. Right? But if I'm the only one talking all the time, that's prayer. But if I cannot acquire the ability, and sometimes it has to be acquired. If I cannot acquire the ability to sit still, be quiet, and allow that allow that force of the universe to speak to me, to wash over me, I'm in trouble because then I'm just left with me. Whew, and that's a dangerous place still today. I'm almost 30 years sober. I'm mm, less than a month shy of being 30 years sober. I'm still an alcoholic. I'm an alcoholic where I've come to learn the depth of this disease that I've suffered from. So picking up the glass wouldn't be the first thing I would do. I suffer from a disease that's so cunning and it really is powerful and it really is baffling. If it can just get my attention and distract me, it can then at least somewhere detour me and then ultimately derail me and destroy me. I would not be the first person with 30 years plus to talking about my name is Robin and I'm a newcomer. How does that happen? So I choose to believe what it is you taught. You shouldn't have taught it to me. <laughs> and I choose to give this program and this process a chance as long as it worked for me. And it has not stopped doing that today. So I'm in an environment that can be harmonious and peaceful no matter what's going on, what, what, no matter what the state of life is in it. I have family members in this house right now that don't all jail together well. <laughs> Some from opposite sides. And family that's been coming in in the last week. And so while enough of them are here to interact with, to maintain each other and the nurses and the, you know, the, all of these other people coming in to assist our family member. So I sneak off and I head in the opposite direction in a two hour job driving. 
I go show up for us. <laughs> They'll maintain what's going on here. And the family member that's going to transition is going to transition no matter what. And we don't have anything to do with that. And I'm really grateful to God that they've had an opportunity to come in so that whatever peace they needed to make with this, they were able to do so. Because I'm fine. I go show up for 12 step calls and, uh, and live my life and do those things that are directly in front of me. You know, we're, we're fortunate that we have round the clock um, care, personal care for them. The, and the RNs come in and, you know, this kind of thing. And fortunate enough to have, be able to have the housekeeper not come every other week, but now come every week since we're having so many people in the house. So while God is about the business at hand in my life that I can't control, then I suit up and I show up to it every day with the faith that he's gonna, he is going to illuminate my path and make my real list of things to do visible to me. So then I have a choice to either walk that out or sit on my laurels. And I don't know about you, but I don't equate misery and sobriety with each other. I can't do that. I was miserable when I got here. I can't do it. I choose not to be miserable in sobriety. So I'd much rather be the one deployed than the one sitting on the sideline of my life waiting for somebody to come see about me. How about you? That seems like a better deal to me. I much continue to try to walk in this thing called faith and trust that the same power that has kept me when I didn't have sense enough to keep myself will still show up for me today. And in the tomorrows to come, as long as I stay on my path and I continue to be Robin and allow God to be God. Because when I take on the driver's seat and put on that chauffeur hat, I'm in trouble. And I see Mickey, the praying hands. Is that my time frame? Oh, okay. Make sure you let me know. It just interrupts, whatever, okay? You have okay. 20 minutes. Okay. I very well may not use the full 20 minutes. I'm accustomed of dispersing whatever it is that I'm supposed to in the day that I'm in and the time frame that I've been asked to. I will... I will cut a share off before I go on rattling about stuff and I get into me. So whatever you hear shared, whatever you hear shared here for me tonight, right now, it's not me. It's whatever this, it's just whatever that power has put on my heart to just share with you. And so I sat here about 20 minutes prior to logging on in prayer and meditation to reduce myself and to increase the force of God in me. That's what you asked me to come here and do. You didn't ask me to come here and give you my ideas and, and my speculations. And you asked me to come here and share my experience, my strength and my hope. And that I'm doing with you in the, in the most mm -hmm honest and transparent way that I can. You're in my current life right now <laughs> in the day that I'm in right now with me. And we all get, we all get our turn. We all get our turn. And I want you to know what that's like. Over the last 29 years, I have had to be the responsible party in my family structure for more family members than I can even count. I'm not a person, I'm not a scorekeeper. I don't mark things. I don't know anybody's anniversary of their deaths and stuff. I celebrate their lives. I don't know how this came <laughs> to pass that it would be me to have to be the responsible party, but I thank God. I'm really grateful to God that More was instilled in me and more was to come. You know, our book suggests that in our literature suggests that more will be revealed to us as we keep moving forward in this path. 
That's the best thing that I ever heard. If all of me had been revealed to me at one time, I probably wouldn't be sitting in the seat. It would have been more, much too much for me to bear. Really, you know? And all of the life experiences that I've had over the last almost 30 years, they didn't all happen at once. And each one prepared me for what was to come. And if I had known it at the time, I don't know, I might've stopped in the middle of my tracks. But I didn't know until I knew. And so now I'm here. And I have this extraordinary power that has a 100% track record in my life. When I look back over my life, a 100% track record. It was me being stubborn and abstinent in obstinate and it was me it was never the power it was me it was me that chose not to be obedient when I knew what the right thing was to do and I did what I wanted to do anyway it was always me I can't blame it on the power so now knowing this about this power I just choose to rely on it if it's if it's carried me when I couldn't carry myself when it's protected me, when I put myself in harm's way, when it's provided me, when I inappropriated what I was blessed with, right? I just choose to go ahead and trust this power. <laughs> Let's see where we go. Let's see where it takes me. It's, it's not failed me yet. So I get to be the woman today my family members weren't trying to rally around me and hang out in my home prior to me getting here. <laughs> and so many of them I had alienated. I was a closet drunk. They all knew something was wrong with me, but they couldn't put their finger on it. They didn't know what it was. And through bad relationships, bad marriages, you know, I, 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 I never bothered them with whatever I thought my problem is in life. And I didn't bother them with this thing. But what ended up happening was when I made it to you and you loved on me, I kept wanting more of that. I knew I was safe, man. I knew I had finally found my place in the universe. When I made it here to you, you didn't judge me. Some of your stories were worse than mine, so I knew I was in the right place. <laughs> so you had so much hope. You, you just had that. You know how an expectant woman has this glow about her somewhere it starts in her pregnancy? So many of you had that glow, and I wanted that. You became this incredible attraction to me, and I wanted that. And you told me how I could have it. And I didn't acquire this relationship that I rely on now overnight. Every day I was given an opportunity to trust or not trust. Every day I was given a situation where I could believe or not believe, where I could show up or shrink. And it just so happens there was enough fight in me to want to keep showing up. And I get to be here right now and live my life with purpose, on purpose, every day. And I ask this power to guide me through my life each day. Every day I say, God, not my will. Please direct me in the path that you'll have me go today. And part of my meditation and part of my prayer life, there's a part of it that goes like this. God, please bless me to connect with those that you'll have me to share any part or course of my day today. Please guide my way. Please bless me to make the right connections at the right time with the right people, given the right set of circumstances for the right outcomes according to your will. Please, not mine. Because if it's left up to me, I'm an alcoholic. My alcoholism could show up. 
it doesn't go away. And it would show up in a way that's tailor-made just for me where I would not recognize it. So I have to keep people around me who will look beyond the fluff in my life and see the alcoholic woman and call me on it in the blink of an eye. I've learned to trust and rely on the power in you to help me make it through the storms of my life. We all have them. They're going to come. And if your life is peachy keen, totally rosy, and there's nothing out of sync and out of place, get with a trusted friend. <laughs> Hold on to your seat and enjoy that moment. Their seasons. Enjoy. It doesn't stay that way. Life is life. And so, um, I choose to be deployed. I choose anybody, Mission Impossible. That, that's way back. Everybody on this platform is not going to remember or know that name. <laughs> there was this program way back in the 70s. I'm going to hope it was the 70s because I've been here a lot longer than that. Don't let my hair color fool you. And so uh, there was this program called Mission Impossible. And in the program, they would give the person a synopsis of what the, the mission was going to be. And then they would seal that thing and sign off by saying like something to the effect of, should you choose to accept, you know, this mission? You know, like you're on your own. They, was, they would tell them like they'd be on their own from that point on. Well, you know what? I'm deployed on a daily basis to suit up and show up to life on the behalf of someone else because my life is not all about myself. I'm so grateful. <laughs> I'm so grateful that I'm not all that's on my mind. Ooh, that's a dangerous place for an alcoholic. Um, and I choose to accept the missions. The Thank you. Thank you so much. So let me, let me round this up by saying this. Um, the assignments that are offered to me by this power, I've learned how to embrace them and just simply give God my absolute best in the day that I'm in. What that looks like, what that means, I don't have anything to do with the outcome of it. But just simply give God my absolute best in the day that I'm in, however he chooses to assign me. I would much rather be making a deposit into a spiritual account that may aid and assist me for the balance of my days than to not trust the power. It's never failed me. And it hasn't, it hasn't in 65 years. <laughs> in 65 years, this power is kept showing up for me as it does right now today. And when I get off this platform with you, I'll go back down and, and reconvene with my family and I'll love on them and their differences. And some, I have to pray for them in a particular way because they don't have a worldwide fellowship like we do. They don't have us. No matter what I'm going through, if it gets too heavy for me, I call on the power and the power tells me who to call, call you. <laughs> Teresa's walking through a situation with her mom right now. So Teresa will understand if I'm walking through one that I've just entered in, you know? Um, I thank you all so much for allowing me to share myself with you. I thank you for asking me out that you would trust me to come and share my life experience with you. Because this is current. Right now, it's current. I speak of the past, but I'm telling you about what's happening here in my life today, and I welcome it. I have my moments that I go off, I cry my tears. They're not necessarily of sorrow anymore, but they're more tears of joy 
that the power has been showing up in my life and I'm aware of it for the past 30 years so that I'm not sorrowful because I couldn't be present. I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the deployment. I'm so grateful. I'm grateful that I have a worldwide family that will still envelop me and love me and, and help to keep me on the path that I need to be. And that will tell me when I'm not on the path that I say I want to be. Mm -hmm. You're out of line. You're off course. So listen, if no one else has shared this with you today, I'm so grateful that I can say this and really mean it from my heart. I love you. <laughs> I love you two days sober. I love you celebrating 50 years. I love you that you're a fourth returner that you had to keep coming back. I love you. I am you. And without you, there's no me. There's no place for me on this platform without you. Thank you for allowing me to share. God bless. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sobercast is ad-free, and we'd like your help in order to keep it that way. So if you'd like to help us be self-supporting by pledging a dollar to a month, visit Sobercast.com and look for the donate links. Thank you very much.